Hello and welcome back. Uh, this is part two of my Zenbot CNC build. In part one, I built it. Just physically bolted everything together, got all the hoses, the wires, all that kind of stuff ran. So now today we need to go over software. But first I'm gonna give you a little once over again in case you didn't see the other video. And just to remind you of what I all did on this machine. Okay, to start, I bought a water-cooled spindle. Had to run the water-cooled hoses. Had to buy a 14-4 wire, um, soldered inside here myself so I could get that hooked up. This came with it. Goes through this channel and down. They do have a serial port here where all three of the limit slash home switches go to. Of course, had to mount all the stuff. Run the wire, here's where I had to switch to regular hose and go down. Down there is the chiller that I purchased. It has an in and out. I'm not positive if it absolutely matters, but according to the book, it goes in on, um, well, actually I shouldn't even say that. According to this little sheet, so you know, you got coming from the pump, it goes in on the left and exits on the right. So I went by that on here, uh, in on left, exits on the right. So then, um, again, that's the chiller. Now the chiller itself, uh, there, there is an alarm system on it you could do something with. I'm not gonna bother with at this point because there's a red light here, good enough. On the chiller, there's just an on-off switch. Turn it on, she starts pumping and tells you the temperature. And then uh, she's running now and it's pumping fluid. So there's nothing really there except hooking up obviously 110 volt and hooking up the hoses. On the spindle, the default way to hook this up, and I will just plug it in down here. The default is all controlled through this panel, which is how I'm gonna run it at first. But I did run the wire um, into here to control it through the gecko drive. But by default, this is how it's gonna run. Now, I see lots of videos out there that do talk about setting this up properly. I plugged it in and gave it a test and it worked. I started messing around with it and then I reset to factory and thought I knew the settings I needed and um, she didn't work. What I realized is again, this little sheet came with the, here's the book and the book does go through a lot of settings, but there are so many settings in the book that I didn't know what all to set and what not to set. So um, right here, we're up to 180 in numbers, PD, PD 156, 160. There's a lot that can be set and there's probably more I need to do. I am still a beginner, so I know very little about this stuff, but I'm learning. However, this sheet, it was very crucial because I went with the 110 volt that I set each one of these settings right here. There's the 110 volt. Um, and you got the 400 uh, hertz. So once I set those settings, when I did a factory reset, I thought these settings would go back to these settings. It didn't. It actually went back to a 220 volt settings and it didn't work. So I came in and I set these settings I also went through a couple other things and just did a, a few minor settings. This also talks about the wiring and wiring the motor up. So inside of here, there is um, three wires that go to control the motor and three or one wire for ground. So when you're hooking this up, on the motor up on top, one, two, three, and four, and I put them in order, one, two, three, and four. So that would be one, two, three, and then ground wire right here, four, earth wire. So I put them in that exact order and it works totally fine. I also then had a wire in a power cord. As you can see now, I cut a cord off of a different device for now. I need, I'm gonna wire it in when I get it into the right spot. 
Um, in this court happened to be in different, uh, must be uh, European, so in, it has different colors. So in this case, brown over on the R, blue on the T, and then green also on the ground over on the right. Now you'll see there's also these three wires right here. Those wires are for when I want to control it through that. Uh, again, the basic setup is what a lot of people will use. If I hit run and I hit, um, all I'm doing is turning this dial and then I can crank up the speed. Now I don't have the coolant on and I'm not actually running a piece anyway. So that's pretty much all there is for the spindle. Now, because I'm not actually running anything, I'm able to unplug it and just leave it off for now. So after that, this is the Gecko Drive control box from ZenBot. The only reason I have the cover off is because I wired in the extra three wires to control the VFD and I wired in this e-stop that I purchased from Amazon. So if you didn't want to do those at this point, if you didn't need the e-stop and you don't need, if you're not going to control this, you don't even need to open this box. These wires are already hooked up over here, this yellow, orange, and red, because those wires are for the home switches on there. And automatically the ground and power and everything will be hooked up. All you need to do is take this cable, which comes with it. This cable hooks over there to the top, um, the serial port. Of course, fish through here and hooks into here. This is the three home switches. Then I labeled these cables here. You'll see A, Z, Y, and underneath there, X. So you need to hook each one of those up. After you get those hooked up, in my case, when I did the build, I went with a UC400 uh, Ethernet control board so that I can run this off of Ethernet. And that converts it through this cable and gender changer to go from male to female because uh, this cord won't plug on. Through this, I have a mini hub down there. And inside of the hub, I have the computer blue cable here. And I have this black cable because I have it pretty long going over to this. The computer I plan on having farther away from the machine for the dust. So that is the basic wiring. With the e-stop, you're really just disconnecting this. So it hooks into the ground and number 10 on here. So number 10 on here and then through the e-stop and back over to a ground wire. By doing that, when you hit this button, normally closed means it's grounded. You hit it and the motor just fell. So it's no longer got power and no longer can do its thing. Now I turned it back on, but the motor will not rise because I'm not in the software. Um, the other wires that are hooked in here, power, ground, again, e-stop. E-stop is hooked to the ground. These three wires are for controlling the VFD. And then I also have this wire here, which is positive, power, and ground. And this wire goes over and goes, hooks into here. This is where you do positive and ground. So the white wire on there is the positive wire. The black is the ground wire when you're hooking up your EC400. Now, I really like that because I just want to be able to deal with Ethernet. I don't want to have a parallel port. I went with this HP touchscreen. Um, I guess just because it was cheap, it was easy, and I like the all-in-one. If it gets too dusty and racks, at least it was cheap and easy. So no parallel ports on any of this new stuff. This, to me, is the ultimate. I can also buy another license of the software, Mach 4, I'm going with. Um, now, I will tell you that, that um, 
Zenbot uses Mach 3, and that will be totally fine for most things anybody needs to do. Dealing with a friend of mine that knows a heck of a lot more about these than I do, he just told me let's go with Mach 4 when I ordered it, so I ordered Mach 4. But anyway, that's pretty much the wiring. All this other stuff was wired by Zenbot, the power supplies in there. I just added my few things in, and I will have to punch a hole in the side to get these wires out because I want to have these extra add-ons. Or I might actually see if there's any way I could sneak that drive inside of here. I was going to 3D print a box for the drive to kind of cover it, uh, the CNC drive um, EC400. So that is the basic wiring. Um, as you saw in the build, you wire these uh, cables that come from your AZ and all this stuff. You wire that down and the motors are labeled Y and A. A is just a joined motor to Y. Um, and then over there you got X and Z. Okay, so on the computer side, the first thing we need to get working is the ethernet because the ethernet talks to the gecko drive. So if you're not talking to the gecko drive, then it doesn't matter, you can't set any settings. So we have to start with this. The main thing is, this is cncdrive.com. Um, you wanna make sure you download, now you can do a manual or an automatic. So right here, there is UCX00 automatic installer for Mach 3 and 4. So you wanna download that. You also wanna download the UCX, uh, UCXX utility driver. I've already downloaded both of these. I've actually already did the automatic installer. You run it, it installs it, there's no big deal in that. Okay, once you have all the software downloaded, you can install the plugin, we'll use that in a little bit. You first need to go to your network settings and change your setting on your network drive. Not your Wi-Fi because the we're gonna run that off of wired network for the CNC. And then the Wi-Fi, if you want, you could connect to your Wi-Fi network if you want internet. Obviously, you gotta worry about viruses and all that other stuff, so that's up to you. I'll probably make it so it actually can't get to the internet, but it can see other networks. Um, so in this case, we wanna go in here and we wanna hit properties. We wanna go into TCP um, IP version four, and we wanna set the settings like I have here, 10, 10, 10, 10, 255, 255, 255. So what this does is this puts the computer onto the same network that's the default network of that um, U, uh, UC Ethernet controller. Then they can talk. So once we have that all on, then what you do is you can run the UC XXX underscore utility program. When you hit scan, you'll see it automatically finds that device. Now you can change the IP address of that device and then you'll have to change your IP address if for whatever reason you don't like the 10, 10, 10s. Um, I really don't care, it's an internal network, it's not gonna hurt anything, so I leave it alone. And you can test the connection, but I know my connection is working. After this, we come in to the Mach 4 software. And in the Mach 4 software, this is where we will have to set all of our settings. Okay, so one thing you wanna make sure that you do is you go to configure and select motion device. And what you'll see here is there's a simulation device, but then there's also the UC400. We wanna make sure that is collect, co clicked. Make sure that is clicked and then hit okay so that we are using the EC, um, the ethernet to talk to everything. Okay, so in here you will see underneath configure you have plugins, and now you'll have this UC400 ETH CNC drive. And in here is where you have all these different tabs that you can go on. Now, starting right off the bat, what I do know is that you have to make sure what you have in the system is what is set. So when you, what I mean by that is I was unclear when I first went in and like what drive or what um, what home switch would be for, you know, what input and things like that. Okay, so what I want to show you on this is, uh, like I said, it's hard to figure out or you think it's hard to figure out what port is what. So as you can see, 
11, 12, or well, 11, 10 and 11 are completely um, not connected. I'm gonna come over here, you can hear it. I'm just sliding the motor until that home switch clicks. So when that home cl uh, switch clicked, 11 turned on. So when I go over here and I push it now off of it, 11 turned off. Same as for down here, I can move this whole unit forward and it unchecked that and now 12 went off, okay? You also can turn this one on. The issue with this is I have to have power on to bring the motor up and click it. So you could put a little piece of tape on if you want and then you could see what is clicking. So that will tell you which switch is doing what when you go to set this up. You also can do things like press your e-stops and different things like that and see what buttons will do what. So the very important thing here is step and direction pins, okay? What you have to do is you have to go to the front of these dri this drive, and now this is upside down. Um, this is upside down, but you'll understand what I mean. So right here, it tells you the step and the direction pins for each one of these, X, Y, Z, A. So what you wanna do is you wanna take those pins and put them in here. Okay, so once you get the pins in, then you have to worry about this negative um, button right there. Really, you don't have to worry about it for everyone. The, the, so those zero, one, two, three, and four will determine based on the pins down there. So motor zero is whatever the pin you're plugged into, that's your motor zero. So when you plug it into your XYZs down there, that correlates to the zero. But up and down, that just means if you, if you want plus or negative going up and down. But where that negative button is very, very important, and this will screw you up big time. If you look at this motor right here, the motor itself is on this side of the belt. Over here, the motor itself is on this side of the belt. That means these two motors are actually running different directions to move the table or the, the top back and forth. If, they, if both motors were facing the same direction, then both motors would be non-negative. You could go, you might have to put both motors negative. Um, in my case, the way the ZenBot is, these motors are opposite. So one has to be negative, one has to be positive. Now at first, I didn't understand which one. I just knew based on the motors that one had to be negative. So if you flop them, it's still gonna work. It's just that if you push the button towards the front of the table, you think it's gonna to go to the front and actually goes to the back. That means you need to reverse them. The one that is positive needs to be negative, the one that's negative needs to be positive, and you just switch it. So in this case, um, as you can see, we have two and three. This one is the only one positive right there. Or yeah, and then these three are negative. So th two of those work together, A, and, um, and again, referencing it here, your motor Y, right there, and your motor A right there. So those two motors have to go together. But besides going together, in or besides having one on each direction, you also have to link them as two motors. So when you link these two motors, you're actually linking them as one motor. They're two motors, but you have to link them as one. So you go up to configure and control. And then what you're gonna do is going to access mapping, access mapping. So I need motor one and motor three to be the same. Here's A, I don't wanna turn A on. I want motor one and three to work simultaneously together, uh, a slave, so that when one goes, the other one goes exact uh, equal so that we know that unit will be pulled together. So that's very important. Make sure you know which motors one, two, and three, and uh, zero, one, two, and three, based on where you plugged them in. Um, zero, one, two, and three. So it's pretty simple to find that out. Like I said, uh, the pin numbers that you're putting in onto 
on the other screen will tell you which one is X and all that stuff. So that determines which one's um, X, Y, Z, and A. So that's very, very, very important. Okay, so another thing, as long as I'm in this screen, next to this access mapping, so there's the access mapping, it's called home and soft limits. In here, you also have to do negative and positives. So in here, you'll see I've got X as a positive home direction, um, Y as a positive home direction, but then there's A that's a negative home direction. So this is when you go, when you hit the home button, which direction on the table are you forcing it? If for some reason you want to build one of these and you want to put your home on the opposite side, you can reverse these. It doesn't mean you're reversing the motors going forward and back or left and right. What you're doing is reversing the home direction only. There's other settings in here, home order, which one you want the home first, um, the offsets, the speed, um, some of the stuff we're, I'm not using at this point. Um, but that is something else that you need to set or would want to set for sure the positive and negative. Because when you tell it to go home, it's using these settings, not the motor settings. If you think about that, if you have two positives on motors that are supposed to be positive and negatives, one gonna, one's going to try to go forward, one's going to try to go to reverse because they're actually flip-flopped and it'll jam things up. So not a good idea. Okay, so the next thing you want to do, now I saw some other videos on Mach 3 and people showed a screen that looked like this, which is in my output signals. But on Mach 4, I had to go into the input signals, scroll down, and get to where it says motor 0, 1, 2, and 3 on home. And then what I had to do is tell them those pins that I found earlier that I showed you, which one of those pins will shut this thing off on the button. When it hits it, it needs to stop the motor. And then in this case, um, I believe the active low means is it normally open or normally closed. So you may need to test yours. Um, the way, so if you look at these switches, I could take this wire off, unplug it, and plug it in here. If I did that, this is now opposite. It's normally closed versus normally open or normally open versus normally closed. And if you read this really close, which you, I know you can't see in the camera, that's how you can figure out what yours is. Um, though This is how they had me wire this one, but the other ones were wired just like this. So we want them all to be the same is probably the easier way. And then that is what I believe you have to set on this active low button. And as you see, pin 12, pin 12. That is motor one and three. Remember, one and three are Y and A, which are joined. So they're both using that same thing. Now, again, not an expert. Maybe you could shut off motor three and it shuts off motor one, but I don't think so. I think you need this. This is telling it to, when you get home, based on that pin, when that gets clicked, go ahead and shut the motors off. Don't let it keep driving itself into the sidewall. Okay, so another thing we need to take care of and I'm going to show you two different screens. You're going to have to do this on yours. I'm not sure exactly all the different um, uh, reasons why different, you know, maybe it's the stepper motors, the number of steps in it, all that stuff. But you go to this control, and what you'll see is you go to motors, and then here's each of your motors. If you click on this, what you have down here is the counts per unit, the velocity, and the acceleration. So what I am biggest or mostly concerned about is that counts per unit. And again, I had to try to figure this out because it didn't make sense to me at first. However, if you have that number at 2000 and you do a measurement, when I tell it to move an inch, it moves three inches or well, in this case, maybe like an inch and a half. So with Mach 4, you get up in this wizard, select a wizard, steps per unit calculator. So what you can do on this, and I'll drag this window over here, is you put what the current number is, whatever the current number is in there when you see it. Um, so right now I have mine set, but the current number at one time was 1250 for me, 1250. So then my units, which I have at inches right now, is one, I'm telling it to move one inch, and at a velocity, how, how many units in a minute, uh, that's just the speed. So 
yeah, that's not going to change. But at 1250, I was actually moving one inch and a sixteenth. Now, I probably will switch to millimeters because um, I think it's just probably a little bit more accurate with the less little measurements in there. But whatever, it doesn't matter at this point. So what you do then is you move your motor, any one of them, you can move, you should do this test on all of them. But as long as you know all of them are the same, it shouldn't matter, I don't think. So you, there's where you select which axes you're doing and you do an incremental movement. And when you do that, what you do is you, you measure it and you say, oh, it's, it moved an inch and a half. Well, we obviously know the number's too high. So then what you can say is you can say it moved an inch and a half. Um, so in this case, let's go 1.25, inch and a quarter. And I hit recalculate and it's telling me it's 1,000 is what I need to change it to. If that's what it started at, if you only moved one inch and you really, or you thought you were moving an inch and you moved 1.25 inches, then you need to put it to a thousand. So you would take the thousand number and you would go back into um, control motors, click on that motor that you're dealing with and you would put a thousand right there and hit okay. Then you could rerun your test and if it comes out to one inch, then we're great, we're golden, we're good to go. So make sure you set all of your motors and even A so that, you know, you wanna make sure one and three that again, join motors are both the same. That's pretty much what I did as my basic setup. There is a ton more settings that I don't even know what I'll do. Um, I've never even used mock before, so this is all new to me. I'm just hoping somebody else that's trying to build one that's new like me is able to um, get something out of this. So I have my e-stop on. If you listen, you can hear the motors like come on. So the e-stop is working and I didn't have to set any settings. By default, that automatically was in there, but that is in one of those pins and all that stuff. But if you put it in pin 10, um, the ethernet controller, because it works with Mach 4, it knows how to talk and it knows that the e-stop is in there automatically is my understanding of it. So in this case, now you're gonna hit enable, which now enables everything. And I'm gonna hit the home button, which I am pretty much home, except for obviously the Z axis. And they were all a little bit off from home. So now it tells me referencing has been there and I am at zero. Now I've noticed cause I'm, I'm still learning and I haven't even cut anything yet on this. I'm still learning and, I, and what I do know is that if you set some other settings and you're out in the middle and then when you come home, it's not at home. And that's where you can, um, you can zero out each one of these and it'll put it say, yes, that is my home. That is zero position. You also can have a working zero and some of that stuff. So that's again, getting into the using of the software and I can't even tell you that I perfectly know how to use it. What I do know is in the software, they do have programs that you can um, automatically open like this one that I'm opening right now. It's an outhouse and it has four of them on there. There is a, a few different ones and there's just a, a nice easy polar test that you can do. So you can test everything, make sure it's all working, make sure it's doing all the different things. You know, there's a G code that's making it move around. So that I'm at that position where I'm able to make this machine do its thing. So just by hitting the button, you can see I'm moving it forward. I'm moving it to the right and left and I can move it down. Now this is where I was talking about. If you notice, my Z is going negative, but I'm hitting the down arrow. I like it that way. Um, and I don't know if that's the way you have to have it, but I, I think it's better obviously because you don't want to hit the up arrow and go down. So I had to have my motor negative on Z so that it works and goes down like that. So um, again, it, that's my basic setup. It 
actually wasn't as bad as I thought it could have been. And um, it is up and I have ran this test and let it go do its thing. Now it is funny because when I first did it, I did not know that the step direction or the um, step count was off and I had it at that 1250. So this is a lot smaller than the first time I ran it. It was, you know, that much bigger based on the, the steps of the motor. So you wanna make sure you set all those settings. And like I said, there's a ton more things that you can set and do and, you know, good things that are, I'm sure this software has. I don't know all of them at this point, but hopefully that helped you get your machine up and running. Um, one of my next upcoming videos, we're gonna try to get the motor, the spindle driven from here so that when you're in your G code, and you, I don't know if this G-code has it. I don't think it does, but I believe the Roadrunner does. So Roadrunner is one of the tests and you can see there start spindle. So that means I will be able to test getting the spindle controlled from inside the app. Now in a lot of senses, if you're in my mind, if you're only cutting the same things over and over and over and over, and you know the speed is one speed, well, okay, whatever, maybe just leave it over there. But I kind of like the idea of putting it here for the other reason of I hit the e stop, it should kill the motor too. So hopefully we don't wreck stuff that way. Well, hopefully that helps somebody out there. Uh, again, my Zenbot CNC got her all set up. We're moving, we're doing everything. We're gonna be putting a blade in it and we're gonna be test cutting some pieces. And then we're gonna be cutting that board that you see on there, that MDF board into a vacuum table. That's gonna be one of my big cuts once I get it rolling. So anyway, thanks for watching.